Hi, everybody. Great to be with you. I was just fondly thinking this morning about, I think it was the second VidCon that I went to in uh, Beverly Hills. Jim Louderback, who, as many of you know, is the head of VidCon, took me to that. It was quite a an experience. I loved seeing the the teenagers there with their moms and dads and the talent. And uh, as I'd already known from a study I had done for YouTube a few years before, uh, lots of people consider the uh, the talent and shows and programming on digital video, particularly uh, in this study on YouTube, to be as good or better than TV. So video is an incredible device, uh, incredible platform. I told uh, a senior guy at the New York Times in 2005 that video was going to be big. Newspapers could be like television. Uh, it was going to be a gigantic advertising medium, and he said I was wrong because video would never scale on the internet. And today, of course, we are in the, as someone said to me yesterday, the internet of video. Video has more than scaled. Video has caused scale. So I'm excited to share with you uh, data. Uh, I've spent 25 years as an analyst in the digital media space. I uh, started Vorehouse Advisors three years ago, uh, working uh, both with operating companies and investment companies, both startups and big companies, and enjoying every minute of it. So let's jump right into the slides. I do a study every year. Actually, I'm currently doing it twice a year, uh, sponsored by a number of the big uh, media companies in the United States, both digital and traditional. And we look a lot at people's digital media behavior, and I'm going to talk to you today a lot about video behavior of consumers. And we're going to think a little bit about uh, what it's going to look like in 18 year, uh, months. And we're going to talk about creator tools and the creator economy. Uh, this is an online study uh, conducted with 2,000 people. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 18 and older. So it's adults in the U.S. matched to the U.S. Census. So you're not going to find a higher quality online survey uh, than one like this. Uh, the data collected in less than the last month, literally. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you some of the highlights. Anybody who wants a copy of this deck is welcome to reach out to me, Mike at VorehouseAdvisors.com. Uh, you're welcome to share this. It is not confidential. Okay, let's start up with uh, penetration. Next page. So we have got digital devices connected to the internet all over our household, huge penetration. Uh, in many cases, you'll see things like uh, uh, desktop uh, being equally penetrated at the very top on the right, uh, laptop uh, by age group. As a matter of fact, the 55 plus sneaks out just a little bit, uh, but then you drop down to console, you drop down to, to, you know, to the other side, you look at, at phone, Phone is, of course, driven heavily by the uh, near unanimous penetration of the 18 to 34 group. Uh, so everybody almost has multiple devices, and they're often connected to the Internet. Okay. Keep going. We'll bounce through a few of these slides that you can look at more carefully if you want a copy of this. Now, I like to look every year at television viewing behavior. And I started this uh, particular question many years ago when I was at MAGAD uh, because I really wanted to understand what was the one single most important way to get originally asked about information and about entertainment. But, you know, with information, it was 85% the Internet 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So I just went to entertainment where we see more of a difference. And, of course, if you look at this slide, and this data is only a month old, and you look over at the old people in my age group, 70% on the right-hand side still consider the TV, uh, not a connected TV device like Apple, Roku, Chromecast, but the TV, maybe that includes some Netflix, is their number one medium for device. And look at how tiny the purple is, 3% for smartphone. So basically, if I want to be entertained and I'm 55 plus, Give me a TV, lock me in the basement. Uh, but don't bother giving me a cell phone. But look at the 18 to 34-year-olds, 27%. The biggest single category 
smartphone, smartphone, mobile first. It's true. And it's driven by the 18 to 34. And you want to know what? You see the same behavior in the 3554. High smartphone, though TV rises a lot. We are the internet of the smartphone. Lots of people, that's fine. Lots of people have a smart TV at home. Lots of people have HDTV, complete overlap there. Of course, it's hard to buy a TV that's not HDTV. I expect the number of smart TVs is probably even higher than this number because not everybody knows that their TV can be connected. I got a note today from a gentleman who used to be at EA saying, you're still asking about 3D TV? How like 2017 is that? So I'll be getting rid of that. 4% of households connected to the internet don't have a working TV. Next. Very much correlated with age group, uh, the smart TVs driven heavily by the younger age populations. Next slide. By the way, throughout this presentation, you will see that we are talking about the digital future by looking at the 18 to 34 year olds. People wonder what is all of this data going to look like in 5, 10, 15 years? It's going to look more like the 18 to 34 year old data than the 55 plus data. These are generational uh, fixed transitions. Will some users, as they get older and they get more responsibility and more family and, you know, et cetera, perhaps more like me, sedentary uh, or sedentary, however it's pronounced? Uh, I expect so, but I don't think you're going to find 18 to 34 year olds just falling back uh, uh, and acting like their parents once they turn, you know, 40. I think you're going to see all the smartphone centricity. And we'll talk a little bit about creator tools and the growth of that area, all driven by the uh, 18 to 34. Unlike traditional TV, which, as you can see here, is at its weakest with the 18 to 34-year-old household. As a matter of fact, we're down now to only 65% of households have traditional satellite or cable service. I've been predicting cord cutting for 10 years at an annual Goldman Sachs conference. People said I was wrong for a couple of years, and they begrudgingly admitted we have some, and now they get that we're in full swing, which I think will be the next page. Yes, likelihood to cancel your pay TV service in the next 12 months. Uh, and we gave a little bit more of a description so people knew what we were talking about. The gen pop, that's the general population, that's everybody in the U.S. 18 to 34, about 13% say they're very likely, in this case, excuse me, extremely likely uh, to cut the cord. That number is up from 11% the year before, up from 9% the year before that, et cetera, et cetera. Look at the 18 to 34 population. 23% of those who have pay TV, this group already is a little less likely, last slide, to have pay TV, about 10% less likely, a couple percentage points. This group not only is less likely to have traditional TV, but they're the most likely to cut it. And as you can see here, the 55 plus 3%. So the traditional cable companies, their future rests. Hark, Herald, hear the word. With the 55 plus generation? I don't think so. And so you have the Comcast of the world pushing heavily into uh, internet uh, services, into advanced internet packages. Uh, there are so many things that cable companies could do. They, some of them in an indirect way, like Comcast, have launched, launched their own streaming service, but they all could have. Now, of course, the competition's too high, and we'll look at that. So we are going faster and faster towards a world where only a mere 50% of the country will have traditional cable TV. Her huge impact on major companies. Great. Now we're going to get into, there's no better environment to talk about UGC video. You know, I am so glad that we have come up with a new, better phrase. I was so uncomfortable with the UGC phrase. It just sounded to me like Uggs or the name of a new dog food or, I, I don't know, a prescription medicine. Uh creator video. I love that. And it's true too. 
Anybody making a video, you know, even if you just send a little Marco Polo to a buddy, you're a creator. You're making content. So let's look at this more deeply. So have you ever created video content for the Internet? Let's all raise our hands. If we were one of the consumer groups at VidCon, we'd all be, I've made video, I've made video. I have 500 followers. Uh, I have 500,000 followers. I have 5 million followers. Look at the general population, though. 27%. Sorry, go back. 27% have made video. Look at the 18 to 34. 51% have made video for the Internet. There's that old group. Mom, dad, grandpa, me. Even Jim Louderback may be in this group. Next. Okay. How many followers do you have across the internet, those of you who make video? Uh, forget about the 55s. They're, they're irrelevant. Uh, but look at this 18 to 34 and 35 to 54. Actually, identical data. Uh, and uh, very uh, interesting to see uh, that you've got, you know, a lot of people with 1,000 or more followers. This is mini media for sure, and mass media made up from lots of mini media. Next. How many videos have people made? A good third have made 20 or more. Uh, again, 18 to 34. Uh, 71 videos on average. Uh, so over the last couple of years, a pretty good number. Some of these people have been doing it for a long time, but of course, the better the phones get, the better the video uh, software gets, uh, the easier it is to, to make these videos. Keep going. I mean, now it's a whole job. What do you want to be when you grow up? You write that paper in the ninth grade. I want to be a video creator. I want to be a YouTube creator. I want to be a TikTok influencer. I want to buy my mom a house. I want to buy my family all new cars because I'm going to be, you know, Noam Chansky on TikTok. Uh, have you made money with videos in the past 12 months? So look at all those people that have made videos. Um, a minority have made money, but again, a pretty good number. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the higher making group earlier that makes 70 videos and you, that's about a third of the group. And you look at this, about a third have made money. You're talking about a sizable number of people. You're talking about millions of Americans who are making money. Now they're making a lot of money. No. There's an even smaller group, and remember, this is now 25% of the 31% of the 31%, so we're now talking about a couple of percent making more than 1,000, but a lot of people making 100 bucks to 999 bucks. I mean, I guess, and if you don't know this reference, ask your, your elders, um, I guess this is kind of the Mary Kay of the 2020 decade. Make 1,000 bucks a year, it's pin money as they used to say. I have no idea why. Uh, next. And do people think of themselves? Do they adopt the moniker of influencer? Again, a great, uh, a great word versus perhaps celebrity. I don't quite like the social media celebrity word is as much. And I think influencer has that flavor of, of interactivity. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, a good group of those who do make videos for the internet, roughly half do consider themselves an influencer. Next. Digital video of all types, short form, long form, live. We're going to run through it right now. Uh, the internet of the video. If I could remember who said that to me yesterday, I would give them credit. Uh, all right. So let's look at the gen pop, the general population. Uh, what is their frequency of viewing digital video of any type from the Internet? Uh, and as you can see in the entire country, you have about 17% uh, not watching any, all driven by those old people over in the 55 plus. Um, you even got 35 to 54-year-olds at double digits for not watching any digital video. Uh, but look at the daily view rates. 40% of America... 18 plus, so it's even higher if you go down, are watching digital video, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, uh, every day. 
18 to 34 year olds, 55% every day. And you 18 to 34 year olds in the audience, when you watch one, I bet you can't watch just one. Is that Lay's potatoes, chips? And then 28% plural times during the week or once a week. So this is a behavior that almost everybody in America under 55 does, and they do it regularly, and they consume a couple hours a week. Uh, 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 excuse me, the daily viewers, uh, one to two hours a day of this sort of digital video, generally on top of a U.S. average of about four to five hours of TV viewing a day in one form or another. Next. And a lot of this video is being viewed on the smartphone. I said at another company, I beat up on the New York Times by name, but this other company, much too wonderful a company for me to beat up on them. Uh, but I said to them many years ago, what is this? It's a TV. And people said, no, 50-year-old people in the room, executive, executive vice presidents of media companies. This is not a TV. It's a phone. No, no, no. This is not a phone. This is a TV. And as you can see, 71% uh, of the 18 to 34 population uh, is using their smartphone to consume online video content. And by the way, about half of them are consuming long form, 20, 30, 60 minutes on their pocket TV. Next. By the way, tablet up this year. Uh, I don't have the tracking data, so you don't need to go back on the slide, but it's been well documented. Statista has a good set of data. Tablets are back. COVID's brought back the tablet. I'll tell you, the problem is my phone dies every two years. I still got the tablet I bought eight years ago. Somehow they make the tablets better to last longer. Okay, our dear friends at YouTube who really brought us this entire industry for which we will always be grateful. Uh, and I have no official relationship or, or financial arrangement whatsoever with YouTube. Uh, they are the man. They are where we go to get our free online video. And it's not just short form. It's long form. There's TV shows. There's TV series. There's international movies. There's all kinds of long form. YouTube is a long form and a short form destination. Facebook, so on and so forth, all the way down. TikTok, look at that, driven heavily by the younger population. Uh, look at Pluto TV moving up, you know, near Snapchat and Twitter. Pretty impressive, considering nobody had heard of Pluto or Tubi. All of these will continue to rise to a small extent. I don't anticipate in the future a huge movement uh, amongst these. Um, you know, Crackle might break out and move up on a couple of key shows. Uh, you know, Vivo might do something exciting. We haven't heard much from, from Daily Motion yet, so on and so forth. You know, we'll, first year we've tracked Triller, so we'll see how they are in this category. Okay, let's keep going. Live streaming video. You know, this wasn't necessarily invented in China, but it certainly was popularized first in China. And probably people have been live streaming millions and millions of people in China for five to 10 years easily. It's becoming a bigger thing in the U.S. now. It's been driven in the U.S. a lot, of course, by eSports. Uh, next page. So we've got about 80% uh, of the population under 55 live streaming, at least occasionally. Uh, you can see we've got a majority in those age groups live streaming at once a week or more. So this is a growing behavior. This is up from last year by, you know, probably a good 20, 25%. In general, I would anticipate that a number of these behaviors around digital video, around live streaming, around user-generated content uh, to continue to grow quite a bit in the next few years. You know, I don't think a 25% annual growth rate in those categories would be shocking at all versus other categories like short form pre-recorded video, which has had huge growth rates already. Uh, I think we're gonna see a backwards movement on some of the video behavior as the nation opens up and people get busier with 
uh, commuting and driving to work, even if it's only two days a week and, and the school buses and so on and so forth. You know, we know that COVID drove gaming and video up. People said it did. Uh, I've looked at some data. I've talked to some people in China who, you know, uh, locked down early and uh, were able to uh, uh, be back in the offices and open up their country much earlier uh, uh, so they can look now. And they're seeing uh, video game rates, for instance, at about 20% above pre-COVID rates. So probably grew by about up to 40%. So I think about half of the COVID growth will continue to to see. So this might grow a little slower, but live streaming's coming. It's all over Asia. It's going to be all over the US. uh, And it's more ways for people to make more money in their creative creator economy. Next. Live streaming is all over the place. These platforms have jumped on it quickly. Uh, why in the world we didn't see traditional media companies uh, jumping on this platform much earlier, I have no idea. Uh, you will see in the Olympics a uh, huge amount of live streaming coming up. Uh, you'll see all kinds of digital uh, priority coming out of the Olympics, out of the, I assume it's NBC broadcasting it again. Um, not true even, you know, 10 years ago when they wanted to basically keep the Internet out of the Olympics and keep certainly all the live to themselves. New companies coming up, some companies going down. Uh, Obviously, we're going to see more and more from Snapchat in this area. Obviously, Twitch will continue to add features and functionality. Uh, Call out to a great live streaming engagement company that I am involved in, maestro.io, providing services for all levels of streamers. Uh, and all levers of creators, and that's the beauty of the creator economy. I can be a small creator with a small following. I can be a huge creator with a huge following. I can talk to my followers live. I can pre-record videos for them and edit them. Next. Frequency of live streaming. It's a minority behavior. Consuming the live stream is the majority behavior. Uh, But amongst those who do live stream, uh, and again, 18 to 34 are the most likely uh, at almost a third of the population, a third of that group, so about 7, 8, 9% of all 18 to 34-year-olds are streaming every day. Next. Revenue from live streams. Of that small group, about half are actually making some money. Uh... By the way, when you see the 66% in the green, remember there's a tiny number, relatively tiny number of the 35 to 54-year-olds. The dominant behavior is in that 18 to to 34 population. Uh, And amount of revenue, uh, as you can see, most of it's well under $1,000, average 100. Um, But this will grow. And I don't think, you know, I guess it's what I say earlier, it was the Mary Kay of the modern uh, era. Uh, I guess uh, it's the newspaper route of the modern era. In my generation, you drove your bicycle around at five in the morning, flipping the newspapers into everybody's front lawn. Now, of course, it's by a car and they have to drive by 10 houses to find a house that subscribes. <clears throat> but now I can make that money. I'm that teenager looking to make a little cash. I can make it through my live streams and my recorded. Next <clears throat> gaming. And I'm not talking about gambling. I'm talking about mobile gaming, video gaming, console gaming, Fortnite, FIFA, Coin Master. All right. 73% of the country is playing games on at least one platform. And this is up probably about 4 or 5% from a year before. Uh, you'll see in a minute that Quite a few people have jumped onto new platforms, but in many cases, someone who was already playing on one platform picked up a new platform. You know, so a mobile player may have started playing PC games during COVID. <coughs> Penetration directly correlated with uh, age. 18 to 34, 93%. This study's only 18 and under, but I bet if I did 13 to 18, I'd get 95%. Okay. Now, creator content. I will, 
I hereby swear on my yellow pad to never use the user-generated content word ever again. And I'm going to change it on my entire presentation for the rest of the year. Creator content for gaming. Let's look at it. Make a game. Roblox, make a game. Manticore, make a game. Buildbox, app on board, make a game. Unity, make a game. Epic, Unreal, make a game. I'm sure I'm leaving people out. Lots of big companies are making it easier and easier for people to make game content. Mod a game, add content about a game, stream you playing a game. People love to watch people playing games who share interest in games. And by the way, I don't really like watching people watch people playing golf. Doesn't mean people who watch golf are crazy. Just means they like watching golf. I like watching gameplay. And as you can see here, about half our pertinent populations are aware of creator content around gaming. Their own digital or digital or virtual content for video games, console, mobile, PC, and web games. Next. Uh, about half, 57 to 60 percent, the 18 to 54, who are aware of this, about a quarter now of the total age group, have actually uh, used a service or a platform to create some sort of content related to video games. Doesn't have to be a pure game, but it can be in many cases. Twitch, make video about gaming. Next. How interested are people in using these sorts of services in the future? How much is this going to grow over the next few years? Well, as you can see, there's very high interest level in what we call in the stats world top two boxes. Uh, and again, driven by age, don't worry. You're not going to have to watch a lot of 55-year-old content. But by the way, and all you YouTube creators, take a tip from TikTok. Look at all the intergenerational content on TikTok. Look at that crazy guy with the red wine all over himself. And his mom, she's in every TikTok. Look at the cool dude in Manhattan or Queens or wherever going down into his basement kitchen where his nana cooks Italian food every day. Uh... 20-year-olds making videos with 60-year-olds. It's community par excellence. So we're going to get more 55-year-olds. And by the way, when all of you are 55, I bet you'll be making content just like you are today, you 18 to 54-year-olds. So growing, 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 creator content, creator economy. What is the creator GDP? If you can find me a good answer to that, I will give you a prize. A gotcha box. You won't know what the prize is till you open it. Uh, okay, interest in tools and platforms that help people who do not program build games. So Manticore, App on Board, Roblox, you actually do program, you program in Luria, Unity, obviously, you're programming. Uh, very high interest. People want to make content. The caveman wanted to draw on the caves. The 18 to 54 year olds want to produce their cultural content, their community content on their phone, on the internet, on digital services at huge numbers. The creator economy is big and will be much bigger down the road. Next. Uh, okay, just next page. About a fifth of people said that they started playing on a new platform as a result of COVID. This was obviously generating additional gaming revenue. I think this will fall back, but not substantially over the next year or two. Next. Uh, why did you start in the last year? Looking for more ways to be entertained. COVID. But there's that top one that's always there. I like being challenged. Matter of fact, you will often find in this chart, it holds true, challenge is more appealing than competition. And at some other time, we'll have a sociological discourse on that topic. Okay, next. Uh, 
how much time did you spend in the last year relative to the year before? And as you can see here, 66% of people 18 to 54 said that they increased uh, their gaming time. Very few people said decreased. I wonder what they did. Those are probably the health workers. Those are probably the people working and holding our country together for the last year and the, the food supply workers and the emergency workers and the uh, government employees who had less time to play uh, games and the moms and the dads teaching their kids uh, and the teachers struggling with remote education. Um, so I don't want to make fun of anybody who, who played less games. Uh, and then my good old 55 brothers, they're just kind of doing it like they always do it, about the same. Uh, more time available. I'm practicing social distancing. Go out, play Pokemon Go, just stand six feet apart. Um, so on and so forth. Clear as a bell. And these poor people, 25%, they were ill and playing more games. So even our gaming economy is helping people with illness. Next. Movie theaters. Who's going back to movie theaters? Who's going to wear a mask? Who's going to still remember this in five years? I don't know. But I do believe people have an idea about how it's going to be in the next year or two. And uh, before movies, people saw, before COVID, people saw about 1.5 movies uh, on average per month. Uh, and as you can see, you had a you know, large population seeing none. Uh, but for people that uh, did go to movies, uh, you see quite a few that are not even sure when they're going back. And you see many saying a year or two. Uh, and I didn't do the analysis, but I'll guarantee you the younger population is more interested uh, in going back than any other population. Will movie theaters ever be 100% back where they were before? Um, we'll see. I, I think, I, I think uh, it, it, generally attendance has been down and generally prices have gone up. I don't think we'll see a lot of price increases short term. I think we're going to see some new business models finally breaking out. And we'll definitely pay attention to whether we'll continue to see people like Warner Brothers releasing movies uh, online at the same time that they release them in the theater, which was a, a huge controversy. Uh, how excited are you uh, about returning to movies? Uh, and you can see your 18 to 34, as I predicted, 61% excited or very excited about returning to movies in theaters. Uh, so it's going to take a while to get back to normal in the movie theater environment. Next. And I end on this question. Are you a geek? Are you a nerd? Or are you neither? America says 37% are neither. 44% are mainstream. 10% of America are nerds. And 9% of America are geeks. Self-described. And... Harold Hark the Angel, the 18 to 34-year-old, at 16% geeks and 17% nerds. All you geeks and nerds, see you soon at the next VidCon. Thanks much.